Grab a cup of tea or a glass of wine and tune in for inspired conversations with publisher Linda Joy. On Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern, Linda creates sacred space for leading female luminaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. A soulful venue where guests openly share the fears and obstacles they've overcome, wisdom and lessons learned, and the personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired conversations to empower you on your path to authentic, soulful living. Welcome to Inspired Conversations. I'm your host, Linda Joy, publisher of Aspire Magazine, the premier inspirational digital magazine for women since 2006. If you haven't grabbed your free subscription, you can do so at subscribe to aspire.com. We're celebrating 17 years of inspiring, empowering, and supporting women in living their best lives. Uh, today, I am excited to have this super talented creative genius because I have been on a website and her photos pull me in. Holly Wilmoth is a nature sculptor and photographer. Her latest project, the Sacred Nature Oracle is a stunning photographic deck that allows you to awaken to a place of sacred sanctuary and become one with nature. Guatemalan born, Holly creates images that embody elements of nature, mysticism, and spirituality, drawing inspiration from ancient mythology, symbolism, diverse cultures, and a deep spiritual practice. Holly's images are a personal interpretation of her life's sacred dance. As you'll discover, she is passionate about nature, intentional living, creating beautiful spaces, and designing gardens that are like sanctuaries. Her work has been published in international publications such as Time, Newsweek, Geo Magazine, Travel and Leisure, National Geographic, and so many others. And she has led workshops all over the world. Welcome, Holly. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Linda. This is so lovely to be on here with you today. Thank you so much for a lovely introduction and congratulations. What a special day to be having this interview with you as well. Well, it is a beautiful day and you, um, I'm, you're in Mexico right now. And I'm like, we are about negative two here right now. And I'm <laughs> like, so tell us, tell us what brought you to Mexico and what inspires you while you're there. Um, well, thanks for the lovely question. I have been living in Mexico for almost 17 years. I can't believe it. Just the end of this month marks 17 years. And my husband and I and our son, who is eight years old, we've been recently living between Portland, Oregon and San Miguel de Allende. And so I just arrived here about a week ago from not quite as cold as where you're at, but let me tell you, one thing is the winter, you know, of the Northern Hemisphere, and then coming back to Mexico, especially San Miguel, that is a colonial town, it has colors and blue skies and the birds singing and it's winter, but winter is very different here than it is in the Northern Hemisphere. And so I can feel myself just um, kind of just giddy with excitement at the possibility of creativity at hands reach. <laughs> well, I, get, I know part of your work or all of your work really is this innate love of nature that feeds it. Yes. Were you always drawn to nature even as a child? I was always drawn to people. So my subject matter for years, like my inspiration truly has always been um, people, people from all over the world, people from all different kinds of backgrounds, faces, smiles, eyes. And um, I always was drawn to nature, but I had a very different relationship. It was more of wow, I was inspired by the awe of the magnitude and magnificence of nature because I used to be a hiker. And that's actually how I started photography. I took my camera everywhere I went. And then um, when I became a mother, things really kind of transformed in a different way where I fully started to kind of understand how I was also part of nature. Nature was also part of me. 
it was the micro and the macrocosmos of life. And so I started falling in love with nature in a whole different way, seeing the beauty of the ground, the plants, the, the textures, the senses, and how it really made me feel alive and really feel grounded and centered and nourished. I can just feel, I can feel the passion in your voice. And as a nature sculptor and photographer, you've traveled to over 60 countries. Is it, what is it about the, is it the traveling that has inspired you and tapping into the energy of the people? Well, <laughs> um, I used to travel a lot. And then most recently, I would say, and that was when I was doing a lot of editorial work, more commercial work. And when I became a mom, I suddenly realized we still do travel quite a bit, but I changed things around in the sense that we would hang out in one location more, having a tiny little child, you know, and we would spend time really getting to know a place. And by getting to know a place, I mean really understanding the plants and the people from that small area. And over 10 winters, you know, we've been going to the small little coastal town in Mexico called San Pancho. And in a way, it's always been the place that we go to to winter. And by wintering, I really mean to simplify our life where we kind of get healthy, really healthy in our bodies, really tune in, take long walks, go to bed early, keep our diet very clean, and just really quiet down and honor that time that is wintering, not only inside of us, but also outside and in nature. I love that phrase, wintering. Like For me, it's like um, I live in southern New England. I tell my clients it's a time of cocooning. Yeah. Is that that same energy that you just described? Because that's what I was feeling. Yes, that's exactly it. And it's funny, I love the sunshine. And yet, wintering, that cocooning, that going inward for me is one of the most precious times of the year. It's, um, there's something about the stillness, like the sacred pause that really allows me to receive, to really look at everything I've learned to look at maybe how I want things to be different, to just be in that quiet space of not doing. And then as the spring slowly starts itching, I can feel like my whole body start calling me to be creative again, which is a little bit slowly coming around this time here in Mexico because it's warmer, but up in Portland where I was just at, you know, really honoring that cocooning and that wintering time feels really nourishing to welcome the rest of the year. What does the spring look like? Summer usually is so wild and crazy with the sunshine and then the slow coming and welcoming of the fall and then back into the winter. I, I feel that um, for myself too. Um, as a company, probably about nine years ago, we close every year from mid-December. Um, My team usually gets two, two and a half weeks off. We close down everything. We don't answer emails and it's for that reason. It's like give them a sacred pause so they can enjoy their family. If I'm taking it, they deserve that. Yeah. And, and then I work with my clients to say like, you know, the world kind of like gets us thinking of as soon as New Year's comes, hit the ground running, start afresh in all this. And I'm like, no, no, enter the new year, mm. unfold in the new year. Like, mm. you know, those first few weeks, those are my most precious weeks after the holidays. It's, I'm still in that cocooning phase, slowly peeking my head out, just feeling the energy. Um, so I, you and I speak a lot of the same language. Mm. So one of the things is in your travels, because I have your deck, Sacred Nature Oracle, and like the photos you choose of people and how you, um, I don't know, you capture their essence even when I can't see their face. Does that make sense? Because some of them are turned back. There's yeah. an energy essence about the people um, that you photograph. And, and not just this deck, I've been on your website to look at the other series that you've done. Mm -hmm. I'm blown away. I'm blown away that I can feel their energy. That's such a gift. 
Thank you. Thanks so much for, um, yeah, feeling that. It, this Sacred Nature Oracle deck was, it was such a gift. It was, um, it really all started kind of unfolding uh, during a wintering time. I remember I'd had a quiet pause for a few years of not really working on anything. And then it was during a wintering season on the coast of San Pancho that I could feel myself slowly uh, coming out of this cocooning time in my life. And I started collecting things on my walks, anything from seeds to little bones, to dried up leaves, to flower petals. And I'd bring them home and I'd be showing my son and my husband. And it was actually during this time that as I started experimenting and photographing that I realized like I, I wanted to start creating with nature kind of showing um, an essence of our humanness and the essence of nature, the interconnectedness, right? Because I realized, wow, we are so very interconnected. Plants speak a language that is so subtle. We, can't, we, we don't always understand it, but the energy is there, right? And so that's how this series really slowly started um, birthing itself was uh, a lot of it coming out of a winter, playing, being curious and creative, and in a way wanting to teach myself and teach my son how to love Mother Earth. What a gift you're giving him, mm. you know, that connection um, with nature. And I want to talk about that more because I feel it's so important. Mm. We're going we're gonna to take a quick break. We'll be back in a moment. I'm with Holly Wilmoth. You can learn more at hollywilmoth.com. We'll be right back, my friend. Connecting you with the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Inspiration for a Woman's Soul. Aspire Magazine, inspiring and supporting women on the path of self discovery. Claim your free digital subscription today, which includes access to thousands of dollars of personal development bonus gifts from Team Inspiration Partners. Claim your Aspire Magazine subscription today at subscribe to aspire.com. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site but a spiritual dating site with a purpose, to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free, ascendinghearts.com. Consistently attract soulmate clients, begin showing up on brand, monetizing on your calling. Welcome all spiritual coaches, leaders, healers, light workers, and practitioners to a show that turns you on in your business and amplifies your magnetism. I'm host, catalyst, and spiritual business coach Rosalind Fung, and I'm here to journey with you into the juicy and help you discover where the real gaps are. Ignite your mindset and soul with strategies and systems as each episode takes you to the sweet spot that activates your soulgasmic business by tuning in on Tuesdays at 10 a.m. Mountain. Join me for your light language activation and let's magnetize and monetize. Your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Welcome back. You're listening to Inspired Conversations. I'm your host, Linda Joy. And with me today is nature sculptor and photographer, Holly Wilmoth. I am holding her beautiful deck called Sacred Nature Oracle. Um, you mentioned right before the break how, um, how you're introducing all of this to your son. And for me, um, as someone that was not connected to nature when I was young, and discovered it as I went on to my spiritual path. I now have an 11 year old granddaughter and a 23 year old grandson. She is so connected to nature and we nourish that. Like she'll call and go grandparent walk and we walk through the conservation land that abuts our land. Um, and she has a stick that she found like a, a nice heavy stick. And then she found tricky feathers in the area and she 
put them to the top. And when we go for walks, she stands there on top of the mounds, right? Like, and she'll watch the nuances of the light dancing on the trees. And I'm like, oh, this is the best gift I can ever give her is to nurture this. You must yeah. feel that with your son too. Yeah, I, well, I, I really believe like he was my little teacher that reminded me and reintroduced me to remembering how good it feels to be in nature. And I'm just like thinking about, you know, forest bathing that happens, you know, the Japanese coined that term. And there is something so magical that happens when we walk in a forest, when we walk around greenery, it's all of the energy of the plants come and soothe the energy of our body. How magnificent is that? And scientific, there's a there's science proven behind it as well. Um, but for my son, it's been, you know, I watched him when he was two and three, those eyes of awe that would just like, be in complete surprise while he was looking at flowers bloom and it's children are connected they already are connected they are they are one with nature playing watching the nuances it's us as adults that have to be reminded to observe yes. and, and and i i feel that same way too i feel that we are all born divinely connected to the earth, the plants, the elements, the animals. And then as we go through life, we it isn't like we lose the connection because we can't, right? Because it's part of our divine being. But I feel that life and the stories and the expectations smother it. And we feel disconnected from it. But when I look at her, just like when you look at your son, I'm like, oh my, she was born with this. I can remember, Holly, her being about 28 months we were walking then down the nature path and this one particular and she had a little butterfly net you know the little plastic ones like from right the yeah. and she's going um what was his name norman so she's walking like five feet in front of us down the path and him and i are looking at each other like i, I go i wonder if it's from a show she watched norman i'm coming and i said Finally, we said, I don't know that show. So I go, McKenna, who are you talking to? She goes, Norman the Butterfly. He's up ahead. He told me. Oh, I'm going to tell you something, Holly. We're oh, thinking, oh, that's so cute. We get to the clearing, this little purple. It was more like a moth-like. It was lilac. Stops mm -hmm. flitting and twitting all around her head. And I remember going, look at, I was looking at each other like, well, this is weird. In a, in a magical, weird way. Do you know what happened every time all that season, every time she went for a walk with us? When we went alone, he wasn't there. Oh. And he would flit and she would dance and talk to him. Same with this woodpecker all the time. And I'm like, wow, that is divine connection. But all of us have it. We just became disconnected. My healing came in my life when I began reconnecting with nature. Yeah. And is that the message that you really want? in your work to share that nature is a healing force, that nature is a sanctuary? What yeah. is like the energy and vision that you want others to walk away with? Well, definitely what you mentioned and this just deep reverence and deep honoring that Mother Earth is such a wise, kind and fierce teacher. You know, I, I think that we're all walking a path or many of us are walking this path to really love ourselves and learn how to love ourselves, right? And if we can love the mountains and the rivers and the trees and the beings that are human and non-human, like maybe that courage, you know, and that awe and magnificence of life all around us can translate into our heart. And we can find that place that rests inside of us to really love ourselves also for who we are, right? But it is true. Nature is a sanctuary. And if we're part stars, like we are part cosmos and part earth. How can we not love this planet that we're living on? And and yeah, I, I really hope and wish that um, for anyone using this Oracle deck, that this reconnection to nature and the interconnectedness can really be something that becomes part of everyone's individual path, you know? 
I think it's so beautiful on, on the back it says the sacred nature oracle can help you invite more nature ritual and beauty into your everyday fast-paced life and I think that's what, what was missing for me for many years I was just felt like I was on a hamster wheel and now my honey and I have been together 28 years we start every day except for these negative two days that we're experiencing now um, we get up right after sunrise and we walk the path through the woods around the pond, that beautiful pond that we live on. What a way, it, we've been doing that probably about five years. Um, what a way to start our day so grounded in nature. Sometimes we speak to each other and sometimes we're not. We're just there listening, looking for the deer, watching the squirrels. Um, it has been so healing and, and beautiful for the two of us together too, but individually. It's a uh, such a sacred way to start the day. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And and as you mentioned, you know, in a fast paced world, we are living in a faster paced world. How can we come back to more of a stillness? And nature actually invites us to that stillness. Yes, it does. It's like slow down, feel me. I've always been um, a tree lover, right? So it's funny because through over the years in our homes, I've always found, especially silhouettes of trees, mm. different trees. I, I love birch, but I would come home with a, you know a, either a painting or a photo or even maybe sometimes a sculpture, and Dane would go another tree, huh? And I'm like I can't help it, right? And there's something about them, like just sitting at the base of them, brings me back to center. And so in your work, I see that kind of energy, that kind of healing energy. Um, and I'm looking at the photos from the Sacred Nature Oracle deck. And tell us about them because they in incorporate stunning imagery of humans blended with plant medicine. Well, um, the first photograph that really kind of, and I want to mention this because it, it was the first image that really kind of invited me to say yes this is how I want this project to really feel and look was the jacaranda flower the jacaranda flower which during the uh, months of late March beginning of April starts covering all of the town with little polka dots lilac lilac polka dots all around town and then as the petals fall you know you have all of the streets are covered in these beautiful lilac petals and when I was growing up in Guatemala, right outside of our front door, there was a big jacaranda tree and there was a swing on it. And I used to swing, you know, all year round. And then I always remember the season of the jacaranda flowers and the petals falling on the ground. And I have a sweet childhood memory of feeling really connected to home, to the place that I called home, to the land, to the tree. And so it was that flower that actually started this whole series. And at the time, I mean, every one of these images is really created in the moment. And when I decided to work on the series, I thought to myself, so how am I going to choose or how is this going to work? Because I didn't really know. And I remember uh, listening and thinking, okay, how about I guide myself with what is blooming and what I start noticing. And for the next two years, as we traveled, we were visiting friends and traveling around. And that's really the criteria was to just pay attention to what kept on saying, hey, check me out over here. Hey. And uh, so, yes, the first image of the Hakaranda, I ended up weaving long, long strings, and then making kind of a necklace piece that uh, wrapped around this young woman's neck. And I have to tell you, for every piece, I would collect the flowers. Um, lots of them are already on the ground. Um, some of them had been uh, cut, and they were in trash cans or things like that. And I would make them and the sculpture piece would literally last anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes for the photograph. And then that was it. And there was never really much of an idea of what I was going to do. It all was happening in the moment. And some flowers don't stay open very long either, right? So that was always kind of the fun challenge of, ooh, how quickly do we have to do this? 
I can't even imagine. I mean, just to because I'm looking at the photos, I'm like, you only had moments, right? Really to capture the essence of the flower and the human together, but especially the plant. Yeah. Because as you shared, it's always changing and shifting. Yeah. So you mentioned um growing up in Guatemala. What nature did you also grow up in and how did you learn about native plants? Like you also live in Oregon. So tell us a little bit about that and then we'll go to our next break. Okay. Um, well, I, I was born and raised in Guatemala and my father was a farmer when I was growing up. And so on the weekends, he used to take us kids to the jungle and always on the drives, he'd be pointing at all the trees and different crops and teaching us how plants and trees look. So from an early age, I really learned how to uh, study, you know, botany and plants. And when I moved to Mexico, living up here in the high desert, you know, I didn't know any of the plants. And it took a while to really realize that a sense of me wanting to belong also meant me wanting to learn the plants that I was surrounded by. And the same thing happened actually with the Pacific Northwest, with Portland, Oregon, where my husband had been living. And so I slowly started entering really into relationship to learn about all of the plants and trees and nature that I was surrounded by. So beautiful. And, and to be able to experience as many different countries and the beauty and the people just leaves an imprint on you, don't you feel? Oh, yes. And, you know, I, I feel that some of us resonate with certain climates more than other. And really uh, seeing all of the trees and the plants, like whenever I go back into more of a tropical uh, atmosphere, I always smile because I always know I'm going to see like large plantain leaves tucked away somewhere or gorgeous kind of ferns or, and then when I'm up in the Pacific Northwest, I know that no matter where I take a little hike, there's going to be ferns down by my ankles or Salal, right? It's so beautiful. And yeah, as I shared before, I was thinking just in Costa Rica and just the beauty of um, the plants and nature just speaks to my soul. I'm a sun girl. So we're going to take a quick break, Holly, and we'll be back for the next segment. I'm with Holly Wilmoth. You can learn more at hollywilmoth.com. Be sure to check out her new Sacred Nature Oracle deck. It is stunning. Give yourself this gift, my friends. We'll be back in a moment. The best of the holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Are you feeling the call to unleash your feminine wisdom, hone your empathic gifts, and rise as the goddess you are? You're not alone, my beautiful friend. Crystal Cockerham, spiritual mentor and certified red tent facilitator, trained in both shamanic and priestess practices, works with awakened, empathic women around the world to unlock their shackles of pain, shame, and self-condemnation so they can reclaim their sovereignty and liberate themselves from the world's perceptions. As the founder of Wisdom Awakens and an international best-selling author, Crystal uses her own intuitive blend of spiritual midwifery and energy healing to support women on their journey of transformation. You'll find supportive guidance and community in Crystal's programs, retreats, and sacred offerings. If you're feeling the call to embrace your feminine power, learn more about Crystal's supportive services at crystalcockerham.com. More than 24 million Americans have an autoimmune disorder, and that number continues to grow. I'm Sharon Saylor, and I'm one of those 24 million. To put that number in perspective, cancer affects about 9 million and heart disease up to 22 million. That's why I've brought together top experts and those thriving regardless of their diagnosis to bring you the latest, most up-to-date information. Join me, Sharon Saylor, Friday night, 7 p.m. Eastern, for the Autoimmune Hour on Life Interrupted Radio to find out how to live your life uninterrupted. Hey, hon, what you doing with your phone? Taking pictures? No. I'm asking you questions. Like what? Hey, Bobo, do flowers have best friends? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, follow me. I want to show you something. Look, flowers do have best friends. Whoa. Some answers can only be found in nature. Discover the unsearchable. 
Visit discovertheforest.org to find a trail near you. Brought to you by the United States Forest Service and the Ad Council. Free your mind with Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Welcome back. You're listening to Inspired Conversations. I'm your host, Linda Joy. With me today is nature sculptor and photographer, Holly Wilmer. So Holly, we were just talking about, you know, all the different life experiences you've had, how nature has touched your soul. And let's talk about the energy of nature, because if someone is in search of comfort, where might they find this healing energy in nature? Or how can they tap, in, tap into joy in nature? Well, there's different um, ways of really coming into kind of conversation or energy with nature. One of the ways that I find the most soothing is really to take a walk, you know, leave my phone behind, leave anything that attaches me to a faster pace and really go out and walk and observe and just notice what keeps on popping up, you know, maybe it's a walnut here, oh, another walnut there, oh, but maybe it's a heart-shaped leaf that keeps on showing up in the walks, and somehow just entering into that space of walking, it becomes kind of like a meditation, and then I can feel my breathing slow down, and then I suddenly start really feeling the gift that nature has, and it's not always necessarily about joy, but it, for me, it feels like it's more about finding this place of rebalance inside of myself, and in that place of rebalance, welcoming in the possibility of joy, welcoming in the possibility of creativity, because I don't know, there's so many different ways of looking at creativity, but for me, creativity is just saying yes in the moment to what is appearing and feeling kind of like a pull from the divine inside of me with nature and wanting to play. It doesn't matter how it's going to look. It doesn't have to have an end. It just is. Um, so that's definitely one way of looking and finding joy and being in rebalance. And then you know, with plants and flowers and herbal essences, they all have different energy. Chamomile is great for comforting the heart. Uh, you, we all go to chamomile at night if we need, you know, some warmth inside of us. Um, how beautiful that plants and nature can speak to us with healing properties. It's just, it, it's, it's amazing. And it's an, of course, Exactly. Like the, of course, is what speaks to me. And it's like, when we become disconnected from nature, as I was at one time, my first probably 30 years, I was so in my head all the time, I didn't see the beauty around me. Right. right. And, and now it's like, like, I'm sitting here, I have a bay of four windows, um, which is really important to me and Dana, we have windows that um, are around the house that we're just always looking at nature. So as I hold my interviews, I'm staring out at a conservation land and watching the squirrels um, rustle. It's such a soothing, a soothing gift I give myself. And I realize that not everyone has that opportunity to experience that. Either they're not in that area to be able to, like city children, don't get to experience this. And I know there's organizations for the last decade that bring inner city children to nature so they can have that connection mm. don't you find that it's so important that we have to introduce the children yes i mean because the children are our future we are here to support and keep on you know talking about the importance of nature but they are still so connected and they children are the ones that are going to be making decisions for the future together with technology and with this fast-paced world how to protect mother nature so conservations right how wonderful to be looking out at conservations and how can we keep on introducing children um to nature especially children that are living in cities that don't have that kind of easy access exactly and for me when i see the joy like she had a uh, granddaughter had a tough day in school one of her friends was like you know just had going through an emotional tough time and McKenna being an empath she her heart was sad for her friend that's when she called us and said grandparent walk and I oh, watched that. the energy shift you know as she walked and it wasn't like she was heavy energy it was just she had a wounded heart and at the end she said you know what 
I can help my friend more if I'm happier. Mm. Like she knew in that empathic moment that nature helps rebalance her and then she can be more of service from that re rebalanced state. And isn't that what we want the children now to move out with that energy into the world as they grow up? Because they're the ones that are going to have to save the planet. Yeah. They're the one, and if they don't have a connection to it, they're not going to see the value in doing so. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I I truly believe that, and so much of it is in, you know, conversation. How can we reintroduce the important conversations about our interconnectedness to Mother Nature? We are we are not separate. That was a time before we are part of. Right. So. Yeah how does bird speak to me how does fox speak to me how do creatures speak to each other in nature and how do plants coexist and co-live together right there are certain plants that come up when the earth has been you know damaged they come to resoil and reoxygenate um there is such a beautiful conversation happening in nature and the story of that is a story that we can introduce to children. I mean, as we're introducing it to ourselves. Yeah, it's, it's so true. Watching um, nature through her eyes, all the books she loves to read, just gives me such joy. Yeah. So what I want to talk about before we go for the final break is you talk about sacred sanctuary. You mentioned that word and I just that those words speak to me, right? So why is it so important for us to cultivate and build our own sacred sanctuary? And what does that look like? Well, sacred sanctuary, you know, it can really signify so many different things. And the way that I like to use sacred sanctuary is really about a sacred pause. What does that sacred pause invite? And in that sacred pause is the sacred sanctuary of understanding how I want to be in this life, how I want to align, what feels that it is in integrity, right? And how can I learn to love inside and also outside? So sacred sanctuary is really quite personal and beautiful. And I think it changes over the course of our lives. Um, yeah, it's uh, it, it has to do with, for me, finding a stillness and in the stillness being able to listen to what is wanting to express itself and that's a lot of how this project really came to be you know it took a long time to just keep on observing what kept on popping up and being like hey check me out you know like one flower I remember a friend introduced me I was like ah that one no way and I remember I went out and I walked and I looked at the flowers like, oh my goodness, yes, yes, way, <laughs> you know? So it's um, it's really a subtlety, it's intuition, it's stillness, it's quietness, it's sanctuary. Yeah, that word speaks to me. Uh, for me, it's also having a physical space. Mm. One inside, one outside, that when I'm in it. I'm just fully in my own energy and essence. You know what I mean? And it's, mm -hmm. it's like that. I'm taking a sacred pause. Yeah. And I have a goddess nook when we built this house right here in my office. My honey built in a little alcove in my office. Um, it has a big furry futon mattress on the floor and big pillows and got my crystals and stuff in there. And it, that's my sacred sanctuary. And the, it's funny because the moment I enter in there, I know what it's for. It's not mm -hmm. for doing, it's for being. Yes, exactly. And, yeah, and then we have a 40-foot screened porch that looks out at the um, conservation land. We love, as soon as the weather changes here in New England, we love starting our mornings at 5.30, just listening to all the birds who are so excited to start the day, right? It, it's those moments of just being connected with nature that and taking the time to pause that I think are so powerfully healing and have been for me. Yeah. Well, we're out of our mind too, right? Yeah. We're in our body. We're in our body and in our body, we're in a whole different realm of beingness outside of our head. That's what the sounds of birds do. The sound of the wave of the ocean. We can't 
help but feel it go through our whole body yeah especially the ocean for me i'm i'm a i'm a beach gal and a scorpio <laughs> and i love the ocean we live here on, <laughs> on yes. spring fed pond it soothes me we're going to take our final break and when we come back i want to um, ask you to share some of the native other native plants and healing energies that you introduced in the sacred nature oracle We'll be back in a moment, my friends. I'm with Holly Wilmoth of hollywilmoth.com. Be sure to go visit her transformational photography, grab a deck of the Sacred Nature Oracle, and we will be back in a moment. The best of the holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. My beautiful friend, it's time to say yes to yourself so you can start consciously creating a life that lights you up. You've been at the end of your never-ending to-do list for long enough. Carrie Wooden, Certified Therapeutic Art, Life Coach, and Law of Attraction and Desire Factor Coach, works with women like you who have forgotten what brings them joy and are ready to say enough to moving through life on autopilot. Through Carrie's empowering private sessions and supportive group programs, you'll learn the tools and processes to ignite your creativity, uncover your blocks, connect with your inner voice, and make decisions based on joy and alignment instead of should and have tos. Take the first step on your path to reclaiming your joy. Schedule your complimentary joy empowerment session at CarrieWooden.com. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. This is Kathy Beal, host of Celestial Compass, featuring astrology you can use. Celestial Compass points you to what's going on in the sky and what you can do with it down here on Earth. We also explore fun, effective, and cosmic tools for navigating this adventure we call life. Join me the first and third Monday of the month at 5 p.m. Eastern Time for Celestial Compass. It's enlightening, entertaining, and empowering. The United States has the highest rate of incarceration in the world. At the Equal Justice Initiative, we believe mass incarceration has to end. There is this presumption of dangerousness and guilt that gets assigned to black and brown people. We have to confront our history of racial injustice and commit to a new era of truth. There's something better waiting for us, something that feels more like freedom. Truth can inspire change. Please learn more at EJI.org. Your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Ohm Times Radio. I own FM. You're listening to Inspired Conversations. Thanks for circling up with me and my special guest, Holly Wilmoth, today. So, Holly, in our final segment, you, you mentioned one of the beautiful flowers um, that you, you know, first created one of the images with, and you were talking about some of the others. I'm looking at the um, the box. What are some of the other native plants and healing energies that our, my listeners and our listeners could expect to see in the sacred nature oracle um there's uh there's over 63 64 different plants and there's yarrow there's chamomile there's datura there's white lily um just thinking of the image of datura the energy that it calls is uh, a sacred portal right it's uh, when this plant comes up it can be a time of transformation and um, there's different kind of cacti plants there's the agave flower which is called the quiote that's also part of the series so the plants that are in the deck um, half of them are photographed in Mexico, in the desert and in the jungle, and then the other half are photographed up in the Pacific Northwest. And so a lot of the plants you can find all over the world, you know, because they really navigate and are all over the world. Um, 
trying to think what other ones come up integration for dill for example i love that image uh, we photographed a man and put the dill in his big beard and i love you know kind of what dill calls in it it's a beautiful flower that even sometimes when you might be feeling scattered or overwhelmed it, it brings relief to your body to your mind to your whole energy field um, and it allows you to take a deep breath and regroup and resettle. So all of the plants in the deck are an invitation to look outside the window because you don't actually have to go very far to find them. They can be in your garden. They can be in the parking lot and just to really notice them. And then if you're even more curious to see what they have to teach and what their healing purposes are for. So powerful. And I'm curious, my friend, what is coming up next for you? What creative project are you working on, if any? <laughs> well, right now down here in Mexico, I was mentioning earlier, I have a little bit of an itch, but my itch is an itch of excitement. I've been pulling out everything that I've been storing, kind of in a way, things that are dead in the sense that the plants that are decaying and don't have necessarily life in them, but I think that are so beautiful and even empty nests. So I've started putting pieces together and I'm going to be photographing friends with them. I am very excited to see what comes up and I don't necessarily have an idea of what I'm doing, but what I do know is that I'm allowing that creative spirit inside of me to reconnect with nature and play and play in community and in friendship, because I find creativity when done in that way can be so healing for all of us to enjoy the spontaneity without necessarily having an agenda in mind. And maybe something will develop from this playfulness time that I'm down here. Um, but for right now, it's just really kind of restirring the pot as spring is slowly not too far away. It's so beautiful. Now, how long will you be there now? I will Maybe. be here another three weeks in Mexico. In uh, San so what a fun place to play. Like you said um, earlier in the call with all the colors and everything so bright and vibrant in the blue skies. Oh. I know <laughs> it always energizes me like we we go to Costa Rica in the winter so we were there for three weeks from November into December and is in, in New England we weren't having bad weather we were actually having unseasonably um, really good weather probably in the 50s but there's something about the blue skies and the foliage and the ocean and that inspires you like I was I was just busy being for those three weeks but creative inspiration was just flowing exactly well when i have a notebook i'm like what is happening I'm, I'm relaxing on the beach and it's like and here's the title of your next book and i'm like wait i'm not working right now and so i wouldn't work i would capture it so that my soul knew it was i was listening yeah does that happen to you too it's just it flows in because i'm given space to receive Exactly, exactly. I, you know, there's a lot about somatic movement and creativity and art. And I think that when we're so in our bodies, we feel so alive, right? We are really kind of holding hands with the world around us. And we're really healing a lot. And in the healing, so many doors allow themselves to be open to really move energy through. So yeah, it's a uh, when the temperatures are perfect or when it really feels like things are flowing, it really is an invitation to say yes. It will always come around again, right? It just will have something different. It will be a different energy. Yeah, and I just I just love that time um, of just hearing and listening and, and knowing and trusting that as we create space within ourselves and in our energy field, we can receive but when we're always so busy it's like we're, we're not shutting off but we muddy the connection to our creative inspiration yeah yeah and that's how i that's how i process anyway so is there anything you would love our audience to know or anything um that you'd like to share that on your website that you'd like them to check out aside from your sacred nature oracle 
Um, well, sure. Why not? Thank you for inviting me. You can go on and you can not only see my sacred nature, but you are welcome to also see a series called Divine Nature that is all about animals. Um, and then there was another series that is more about the sacred pause, which is the in-between working on series. And I, I like uh, all of the series that I've been working on because in the end, they're really all about nature and mother earth. So please feel free to follow me on my website. Um, it will be a delight. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. And as we come to a close today, I want to invite everyone, you know, give yourself time for a sacred pause each day take time to spend time in nature whether it's a walk or just sit outside pay attention to the signs all around you in nature there's so many gifts there waiting for you and i, I want to invite you again to visit holly at hollywilmeth.com wilmeth is w-i-l-m-e-t-h again hollywilmeth.com Grab a deck of her sacred oracle for yourself. And I got to tell you, they make a beautiful gift for others. And stay connected with her across the platforms that she's on. You can learn more about that at her website. Holly, thank you, my friend. Thank you for joining me. Um, I love introducing your work and your artistry and your creati creativity to my audience. Thanks for being such a blessing in the world. Mm, thank you so much, Linda Joy, for today. This has been such a delight. Well, thank you, my friend. Enjoy your time in Mexico. And until next time, my friends, choose love, choose joy, choose happiness. Blessings. Thanks for listening to Inspired Conversations with publisher Linda Joy. Join our sacred space every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern and meet leading female visionaries empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. Inspired Conversations with Linda Joy is a soulful venue where guests share the obstacles they've overcome, along with wisdom and lessons learned on their personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired Conversations to empower you on your path to authentic and soulful living.